Wollaston wasn't entirely mercenary, and when he died in the 1820s, he bequeathed, that's left in his will, samples of his metals, platinum and palladium, to the Royal Society. And we still have them. Let's see what's in the box. And here you can see there is a sample that is labelled palladium. And if we look inside, imagine that you've discovered a new element. What would you do? Palladium was discovered by the chemist Wollaston. And this is what he did, as shown by this piece of paper. He made palladium and started selling it. You can see here it says palladium, the new silver. Then down here, he has the price. You can buy five shillings, half a guinea, which is ten and a half shillings, or a guinea, which is 21 shillings. And here he gives some of the chemical properties to that what it will dissolve in and so on. So he starts selling it, not himself. He gets um, a Mr. Forster to sell it on his behalf. And Forster claims he's the only person that will sell it. These were discovered by Wollaston, whose job was to refine metals. And he discovered a new metal. And if it's your business, what you do, you sell it. Makes sense. Then underneath, we got a letter. And the letter was written a year later. This was 1802. This is 1803. And from somebody called Chevenix, who's furious. He thinks it's a fraud. He doesn't think it's a new metal. And here he's describing chemical tests that he's done, which shows that palladium is not a new metal. Now, the problem is that Wollaston had not published a paper describing it. So Wollaston got his act together, and a couple of years later, he wrote a paper. And here we've got his original paper on the discovery of palladium. So he is now describing properly for the scientific literature what is discovered. And I'm always fascinated why people choose the names for particular elements. And here, in these papers, they actually explain why they chose the names. In modern papers, when they discover elements, they publish the paper, and then months, perhaps years later, they actually choose the name. But here he says, I subsequently, that means afterwards, obtained another metal to which I gave the name of palladium from the planet that had been discovered nearly at the same time. There isn't a planet, as we now know, with a name that sounds like palladium, but it turns out that in 1802, they discovered a very big asteroid, which in those days they thought was a planet, and it was called Pallas. This was really fashionable and trendy. Discover an element, let's name it after the new planet. And it's much the same as people do now. When they discover something new, they give it a name that goes with the exciting things in the time. Probably everybody was really excited about a new planet, and this was just cashing in on that, especially if you're trying to sell things. But what this paper does is to show that the element was real. And he describes some of the reactions. And he made this element by dissolving up an ore, that's a rock, that was containing minerals of various noble metals, platinum and so on. And by careful precipitation, he could precipitate one metal after another. In here, got a box. And inside are two lumps of metal. We'll come back to these in a minute. And here, you can see there is a sample that is labelled palladium. There are there is a, two pieces of palladium. And somebody has written something on this one. But what's interesting, he left these samples to the Royal Society to be used for science. So you can see somebody's chopped off one of these corners must have done an experiment with it. And this piece looks a very strange shape, so lots of bits have probably been trimmed off it. 
And then in here, there is an inscription saying the palladium in this packet has been rolled from fused buttons. What that means is they made round pieces and then put it through rollers, so out came a continuous sheet. And you can see here, well, let's see what's inside. I haven't seen it myself. There are two more pieces. This one is a bit strange. Somebody's tried to get a splinter off it. There is some writing on it. This one says number six, and somebody else has written something else on it. Now, what's really exciting about these samples is the letter that, or the list that I've got here. And this list is signed, if you look down here, by Michael Faraday, one of the really great chemists and physicists who's ever lived. It's a list of all the pieces of platinum and palladium that he could find in the collection of the Royal Society. What is written at the beginning is, or somebody else has written, weight of palladium, 74 ounces, weight of platina, that means platinum, 45 ounces and a bit. And Faraday is written out underneath, I find only 28 ounces, 420 grains of platina, and 73 ounces and 373 grains of palladium at this date, the 11th of February, 1834. So Michael Faraday is sort of saying somebody's pinched some of the platinum, nearly half. In the same box, as you saw, there are two pieces here which are of a very dense metal. They feel very heavy, which I think might be the platinum but they're not labelled. They didn't have any paper around them, just a piece of plastic. So I think we're going to have to get somebody to do a chemical test to tell us if these really are platinum or palladium. And what is really important, that these are the samples that Michael Faraday used to do all his electrochemical experiments. And so, it's really like being back in his lab. <laughs>